Hey viewers, welcome to this incredible presentation and as usual, I do begin by encouraging anyone uh, following these videos to continue doing so because this is the time we engage our thoughts with issues that matter and what is the matter in the area of law and especially in the administration of justice. Today's topic, ha, amicus curiae. <laughs> what is amicus curiae? How much do you know or do I know about the amicus curiae? The discourse around the concept of amicus curiae is very vivid in the legal and law literature and we have so much that has been documented about the concept of amicus curiae, the practice of amicus curiae in different jurisdictions, in different judicial systems around the world and in different countries, in different legal systems and the family of laws, of course. However, what is the meaning of amicus curiae? The English jurists translated the amicus curiae whose derivative comes from Latin as friend of the court. In this case, amicus is friend and curiae comes from curia and that is the code in this particular conversation. Let's maintain the standardized uh, definition of amicus curiae, but allow me to look at deeper insights of the jurisprudence around the amicus curiae as a concept, but most importantly, as a practice in the judicial systems. Amicus comes from Latin, as I said before, and it simply means friend. And we usually use amicus brief or amicus settlement of disputes, or we say settling disputes amicably between the parties. But why amicus? Why friend? The answer to this question comes from the very principle of the natural justice and the doctrine of equity that justice should not entail injustice and justice should not be seen to be unfair and be doing injustice. Well, that may sound simplified, but it gives us the understanding of amicus curiae as a friend. And in that case, under the English common law traditions of adversarial system, the parties are adversaries and they are litigating. In other words, quote unquote, they are quarreling. These are belligerents or disputants because they have vested interest in the outcome of the case. Amicus Curie instead is not a party, is not partisan, and is not adversary, is not quarreling. And that is why the use of the word amicus or friend brings the conception of the natural justice that disputes or matters of differences being litigated must also embrace the atmosphere that is friendly, the environment that is conducive, and human environment and that is what the court 
should represent in its manifestations while adjudicating or while deliberating on certain issues before it or while interpreting the law. The face of justice must be seen in the judge and that is in the wisdom of the court. Amicus Courier in this case must incline towards the objectives of the court and that is the administration of justice. It would beat the logic if the Amicus Courier is seeking avenues to influence the outcome of the court ruling, then in that case, Amicus Courier would be the third party. And that may bring a lot of issues and questions about the interest. Originally, Amicus Courier was a person of no interest and not supporting any party before the court in the material proceeding. Another case, he must be a person or she must be a person who is impartial and independent. And his work is to make contribution to the administration of justice and add contribution to the jurisprudence. However, still, clinging on the very concept of amicus courier or friend of the court, we must admit that the court is not under any obligation. As much as I know in the Kenyan legal system, to make decision or to rule according to the information provided for by the amicus courier. And also it is not under any obligation whether to admit or to inadmit an application from the amicus courier. We need also to submit here there too that the court has got its autonomy, independence, and power vested in it by the Constitution to appoint an individual to act as a friend of court in any material case before the court after having been persuaded that that particular person has got the accurate information the technical information and the professional information which the court badly needs in making its legal or judicial opinion over the matter before it. When such conditions and criteria are met, then we can proudly speak about the amicus courier and the role of the amicus courier, the participation of amicus courier and the jurisprudential contribution of the amicus courier brief in the court of law. However, we need to submit the following presuppositions. The first presupposition is the amicus courier that is appointed by the Honorable Court. And the interest of the amicus courier in this case is indeed impartial. But when the amicus courier comes from, within quotes, persons of interest, then the story changes because amicus courier in this circumstance becomes the third party and it is tacit. Being the third party is that the amicus courier has got the interest in the outcome of the ruling and that means by and large the amicus courier brief shall be designed in such a manner that 
it seeks to influence the outcome or to push the outcome to favor one party versus the other party because of the interest of the amicus courier and such in such cases the amicus courier brief can come from an incorporated body a company or certain businesses that need that particular decision in their own favor well <laughs> this is smart Amicus Korea can as well represent the interest of a person who may not be able to represent himself or herself under his or her name. You can act on behalf of someone while instituting a proceeding as Amicus Korea. Amicus Korea, however, within my interest in this conversation is the one representing the interest of the public and that is what is by extension contemplated under the principle of public participation within the constitution of 2010 in the republic of kenya here again we need to seek the knowledge of law, especially the constitutional arrangement of how the amicus courier is envisaged within the provisions of the constitution. Well, the constitution does not specify the word amicus courier, but it is intended under Article 22, sub-Article 1, and also sub-Article 2 as well as sub article 3. The constitution of the Republic of Kenya that gives the sovereignty to the people under article 10 provides for the national values and principles that shall guide the state organs and state officers and public officers in their duty. And in this case, it includes inter alia the rule of law, human rights, public participation, as well as good governance, and there are others. Under Article 22, sub-Article 1, any person can institute court proceeding on right or freedom contemplated in the Bill of Rights whenever such rights are denied or breached or violated or infringed or are threatened and such a person instituting such proceedings can one act on behalf of another person two can act on the interest of other entities, our organizations, associations, and three, can act on the public interest or the interest of associations, organizations representing their members. However, we find that under sub article three, the constitution gives the chief justice all the power to make rules to guide the public participation and give a, a comprehensive outline and this was seen in the rules that were created by the first chief justice under the new constitution of 2010 dr willie mutonga in his rules, he provides for the representation of persons by another person who has got information and is qualified to provide the court with such information 
to inform the proceedings and the court services. This is done also in the spirit of building the jurisprudence, but most important in the spirit of more advanced public participation in the administration of justice. And in this case, the amicus courier brief and the amicus courier information should not lack the wisdom of justice and the wisdom of the court in disregard or notwithstanding the conflicting interests that may emerge from outside the proceedings and in this case the amicus courier is considered quote unquote non-partisan and his presentations and uh, uh, information must be information that is exclusively uh, anchored on information that the court needs and the court may not find such information from the two parties before the court. But if this Amicus Curry brief is involved in certain areas of influence to influence the outcome of the court decision, then the conversation changes. The narrative changes towards the impartiality to partiality. And in that case, the Amicus Courier is forming what I would call, quote unquote, the third party. Well, this conversation can be long and uh, we have a lot of narratives out there among the learned friends and uh, we are happy always to share with the public certain critical knowledge from the critical legal studies that would enable us to engage our understanding with the practice of the justice system, especially in our context in the Republic of Kenya and as per the legal system as it is today and as we want to see it. Thank you so much for watching. Peter here and bye for today and remember to subscribe and check out on us on other videos because there is something to learn.